Teacher, I'd like to invite you to try a little exercise, and that is to take out a legal pad, and on the left column of that legal pad, I want you to write down the names of the students that you teach week, week by week. So you might not write down that uh, column there that says Bob and Mary and George and Tom and uh, so on, and then off the, off the, cro- at the top of that legal pad, I want you to write down these characteristics, these nine characteristics that we are discussing. The first one is disciplined in daily life. And so you want to ask, is Tom, on a scale of 1 to 10, how disciplined is Tom in daily life? Is he starting his day with his Bible on his lap? Is he spending time in the Word and in prayer on a daily basis? And Mary, is she spending time in the Word and in prayer on a daily basis? And George, is he starting his day with his Bible on his lap? So disciplined in daily life. Uh, Is he involved in intimate friendships? Does he stick around after church? Does he go to lunch with some friends? Does he have... Christian friends into his home? Does he do things with friends? Is he intimately connected with Christian friends? Is he spirit-filled? When is the last time he prayed the, the prayer, Lord, fill me with your spirit? Does he know that all Christians are indwelt with a spirit, but all Christians need to be daily filled with a spirit? Does he know that? Is he a Christ worshiper? When he starts his day with his Bible on his lap, does he spend a little time in worship? Does he have a pile of worship CDs or worship MP3s? Does he have an intimate family life? Does he realize that the first arena in which he would live out his discipleship is in his home? Is he marked by passion for God? Is he one who not only believes right, behaves right, does he feel right? Right. Is, he, is he marked by never be lacking in zeal? Is he, is he involved in lay ministry of some kind? Does he know his spiritual gift? Is he ministering according to his giftingness? Does he have a heart for people who are far from God? Is, is he marked by an evangelistic heart? And, and lastly, is he marked by sacrificial giving? These nine qualities are what you're after. Your goal is to take dirty joke telling, crass, rude, crude, pagans, and they come in through your class and out the other side comes a disciple. That is what you are out after a disciple-making teacher. Paul said, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Can we brag about how effective our teaching, and if we could brag about how effective our teaching is, on what basis would we do that bragging? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? What is our letter of recommendation? You yourselves are our letter. The fact that you are living the disciple's life is our letter. And teacher, the evidence that you are doing an effective job of teaching is in the lives of the students. You are out to become a disciple-making teacher. And today we want to talk about that seventh quality, and that is lay ministry. Here's our key verse. Ephesians 4 and 11 and 12 said, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service. So who's supposed to do the work of the ministry? The word could be translated work of the ministry there. It's layman. Uh, And I want to gray out the middle part of this verse. I do this reverently, but I want to to draw your attention to the beginning of the verse and the end of the verse. And just summarize that middle part of the verse by using the one word, leaders. He says, it was he who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastor teachers. And it's easy to get lost in that list. And so we're just going to summarize that by saying leaders. And he gave us leaders. And why did he give us leaders? To equip God's people for works of service. And your job, teacher, is to get your people involved in the work of the ministry. I challenge my people along these lines this last Sunday using a video clip from uh, Kyle Eidelman. In fact, as I showed the whole thing, full 20 minutes. It's the first part of his video series on the end of me, and it's an incredible video series. I would encourage you to just show that. It's about a woman who got a vision for God. It's not about a mission board. It's not about a missions agency. It's not about a group of deacons. It's about an ordinary layman who gets a vision for God to minister to women at strip clubs. And so, so she goes to a strip club I wouldn't recommend men doing this ministry, by the way. But she goes to a strip club and she says, God has laid it on my heart to do something kind to the women here. Could I bring in a home-cooked meal? And next thing you know, a bunch of them getting saved. She's got a whole ministry of 40 or so ladies helping us with that. And it's a, it's a wonderful story about a lay ministry that someone got involved in. And you want your, your people to be characterized by two things. Number one, we want them to, be, to know their spiritual gift. We want to go around the room and we want Bob and Tom and George and Mary and Sam and each one in the room to be able to say, my spiritual gift is... And we want them ministering according to their gifting. That is your goal as a disciple-making teacher. 
Let me mention one other thing before, before we go, and that is uh, Rick Warren is, is right in pointing out that it's not just spiritual gifts. We do want them to know their spiritual gifts, but we also want them to know their shape. S-H-A-P-E. Spiritual gifts, we want them to know their spiritual gifts. We want them to know what they have a heart for. Some people who have a heart for kids, some people who have a heart for worship, some people have a heart for music, and, and some people have a heart for all kinds of things, and we want them to get in touch with what God has placed on their heart. Uh, Their abilities, what natural talent do they have? Uh, Are they good with numbers? Are they good with music? And and, and so on. What is their personality? Are they extroverted or introverted? And this is going to shape shape what God would gift them to do. And lastly, what are their experiences? What difficult experiences have they been through? Have they had their heart broken? And might that be a clue as to how they might serve some, somebody else? What educational experiences have, have, have they had? What experiences will help them to serve other, other people? And so disciple-making teachers, we want to challenge you to challenge your people to be involved in lay ministry. And you want to evaluate your teaching by asking the question, how many people have I sent out of my class?